welcome back. Another episode of Studio Time, and we're still stuck on Mortal Engines, and not without a reason, because it's a great film, and I'm actually pretty happy with the music that uh, came out of it. Uh, so some extra episodes on this movie. Also, there are more themes, and it's a very thematic score, so it makes sense to spend like a little bit more time on this. So now we get to another very important um, person, protagonist in this uh, movie, and his name is Shrike. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it, except for the fact that this is um, a robotic character that is on a mission uh, to do something in this film. Um, and um, this is a robotic character that has human elements uh, in it, and throughout the film, he remembers more and more um, about his time when he was a, a human, before he became this robotic character. So um, it was very important that it had that relentless quality to it, um, almost like Terminator style, just keep going, keep going, uh, I'm on a mission. And at the same time to honor that um, human aspect of, of, uh, of him that becomes more and more apparent uh, throughout the film. So the theme that I wrote for it um, actually was like, um, uh, uh, how do you say that? A hit on the park, uh, a shot in the in the rose. I don't know. Like I have all these expressions wrong. Like what? If you guys know what the proper English expression is, leave it below. Uh, anyway, it was like uh, a hit, like straight. Um, so that was great. So what I did for this is that actually um, this is something that's very. Uh, popular in uh, classic music, um, which is a trick that I stole from classic music. And that is constantly going back between a feeling that you're, um, that you're playing something in the root key, and then you go to a section that is technically not the root key, but yet it still feels like the root key. And what I'm doing in this case is that I'm constantly alternating back and forth between G and C. Um, but on the same bass note. Um, so if we play a G right here, uh, and I play um, something like this on it. So that's the trick. Constantly leave the bass there in the G and constantly going back and forth between G major, F minor, C minor. Um, so that was the idea for the, for the, for the theme. Um, and then there was a second aspect that was really important and how, I did, I, how did I get to this part? And now we need to go back to um, November uh, 2017 when I had a dentist appointment. And uh, I have this tooth right here that is not uh, all that great and it needed some fixes. I sat in the waiting room and I just sat there. And then right outside, there's a garbage truck arriving, uh, picking up the garbage. And when it drove away, it made this sound that made the whole room rumble. And it was, and then it drove off. It was the first two notes. And I was like immediately coming back to the studio after that. And I said to one of my assistants, find me samples of garbage trucks that actually does exactly the same thing what I just heard in the waiting room. I took a little bit of time, but we did find a couple of garbage trucks that sound like that. And then I started doing some sound design on that in combination with the notes that I found. So which were the notes that I found? So obviously, we know we have the G, I just explained that. And basically now I wanted to play this. And I wanted to apply that to the garbage uh, truck sounds and then do sound design with, so it became this really big thing. So we did find the garbage truck sounds and now I'm gonna play you how these things sound. Um, so this is with sound design done on top of it. Here we go. Da 
there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A thematic score existing purely out of garbage trucks. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. So, um, obviously, I added way more to that. So, there's um, what I just played on the piano. Uh, the, ah, the piano is off, but we can do it like this. Here we go. So, I added that to it. Um, and now, if uh, I play some of these resamples uh, together with the garbage truck, it starts to make sound a little. It starts to make sense a little bit more. Um, and then I'm going to play you what I did in the brass and then with the strings. And so here we go. So these are all resamples done from brass and in the garbage trucks and with uh, some extra sound design. So that's what this combination of uh, things is. So let's now go back to the beginning of the suite. So this thing is important. Um, so I'm just going to play you a bit and then I'm going to talk to you about what what is happening here. So here we go. Okay, so let's play till here. Uh, so you got the idea of what the what the suite is. It's like the down, 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 and then it gets super big, and it feels like okay, that's the root of the track being the G. And then we get to the quiet section, and the strings come in, but they start playing in C minor, uh, but still with that G in the in the bass. So it gives a really interesting change between let's call it the chorus and let's call it the verse. Um, but the bass is still the same, but it feels like you're going into a different uh, tonality. So that was one of the tricks here. Uh, I actually have the horns open here that we then replaced with the live horns. And you see that I uh, edited here the pitch band to emphasize that nah, nah, nah. So this is like uh, a half step that I, that I programmed here. 
Um, and then with the live players, they actually uh, played that. But in the sample world, you have to be like a little bit creative uh, to do that. Um, so I played you um, the section with the strings. So let's 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 just open up the strings uh, and let's just solo these by themselves. Um, so you, now you're missing that. Uh, really solid G in the bottom end. So it feels completely different when you just listen to the strings. Uh, for that measure, let's just add the, um, uh, the bassoon to that. Uh, let's also add the two horn patch to that. So, but they all kind of play the similar things. The second out of the, uh, the section, there's like more brass coming in on the lower end, but I didn't highlight that at this point. So that's why you're feeling a few holes here at the very end. But what I'm trying to say is like, when you hear this, you, you hear it completely different as with that really solid um, G bass paddle tone on the, the bottom. So I just wanted to point this thing out. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is all the sound design that happens at the beginning. Um, so let's see what we have here. Um, So we already hear a little bit of that quality do, do, that is like uh, coming in. Uh, so uh, that sound is pretty uh, important to him. And then there's a couple of uh, smaller things like playing here. So I kind of like that grainy kind of thing. Um, and this is like... Um, uh, one of the uh, sounds that comes with Omnisphere, and Omnisphere has, I, I have to hand it out to, to Eric Persing. So let me make a little statement about this. Um, so in the, um, oh, I have a drive, problem with my drive? No, here it comes. So in the past, I have been a little critical uh, on uh, Atmosphere and Omnisphere, not necessarily that I didn't like it. I thought it was so good. Um, and I decided not to use it because uh, a lot of my colleague uh, co composers are using it and it has a specific sound to it. And in order to stay away from what other people are doing, I decided to make more of my own sound design uh, instead of using these, um, these plugins. Now, <clears throat> I have to say, when Eric released 2.0 and recently 2.5. I, I, I really think he outdid himself and he added so many features to, um, to Omnisphere that I've been now completely become <laughs> an Omnisphere user. All right, so the, the, the sound design options that you get in this plugin are really insane. I love the, the granalizer um, thing that you can uh, program. So. If we were to go to uh, this sound and we were to go to its um, oscillated parameters, I haven't switched off in this case, but if you wanted to do it, you can switch it on and there's all these uh, really interesting things you can do with it. And uh, you could actually um, <clears throat> uh, put the, the grain size onto a fader. I mean, like, let's see if it, if it, if it works right now, it would be interesting to, to do. So there we see the granalizer and then here you could move over the thing, let's um, assign this to a MIDI controller really quick. And I mean, 
mean, come on, this is fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic. So, Eric Piercing, my apologies uh, for being critical on this product before. Now you've completely won me over. I'm now a big supporter and I'm rooting for the new Omnisphere um, and whatever comes with it. So, that's the Omnisphere. So, big credit to uh, Eric Piercing. Oh, let me switch that parameter off because otherwise it's not going to sound the same the way that it had it. Okay, here we go. Um, so, there's a couple of these sounds in there. Um, then, Let's see what I potentially might have used here. Um, oh, yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, you might ask yourself, what makes this beautiful sound? Well, this is actually a plugin that is really, really old, and many of you might potentially have forgotten about it, but it's still out there, and this plugin is called Trgsh, Native Instruments Absent. Um, and this is such an amazing plugin, the stuff you can get out of this. It's a little hard to program to get really into it, um, but once you do, it's fantastic, the stuff that you can get, get out of it. So big shout out to Native Instruments for uh, Absent. If you don't know the plugin already, you probably have it because you buy native complete, but you're focused on other things. Open up the app center and just really dive into it. It's a fantastic plugin. So that's the other shout out I would really like to do. Um, and the rest is just all the sound design that I already have in the template and that I use extensively. Um, there is a separate episode on the template. So be on the lookout for that because I actually build a whole new template from the ground up. So. Um, back to the piece. So this is what the Shrike piece is. It's constantly hanging on G, uh, alternating back between the two different uh, tones. One is super aggressive, feels like it's hitting on the G, and then the other one is the more human aspect. Now, I want to switch later on in the suite where now I'm reversing um, um, that pedal note. So the pedal note is now going to go to the top violins. So uh, let's look for that section, uh, if I can find it. Uh, let's look here. Oh yeah, here we go. So if I solo this, here we hear it. So now we have the violins playing this uh, six octaves, five octaves higher than the original statement of the theme. And what used to be the, mem the melody, which is this thing, uh, it's not that thing, uh, it's this thing right here. So let's play that. Okay, till there, very simple melody. So now this starts happening in the basses while the strings are playing this really high thing in, in octaves. Um, so this is where the bass starts coming in. So let's just go here. I'm just gonna solo this bit on its own for a little bit. So the, the strings get more and more intense. Da, 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 da. So it starts very thin and then the violas and the cello, the top cello are, are joining them too. And then a couple of desks of the cello plus the basses are now playing that really low melody. 
And it's really satisfying to um, see those two work together. Now, the other thing that I threw against this is uh, a lot of choir and a lot of brass. So if I just go back a little and then I'm going to play this section again, and it builds up to this insane peak before the theme comes back in again. Now, when you hear this with live choir, it's a whole different ballgame. It's kind of like how to create your own Carmina Burana. Uh, so that's kind of what I did for this uh, thing. I almost wanted to say um, Carbonara. I don't know why. I almost wanted to say Carbonara. I don't know why. Anyway, it's Carmina Burana, a song about beer. So beer and Carbonara, uh, it's more about white wine and Carbonara. Anyway, Let's go, let's leave the food for what it is. Um, let's go back at hand. Um, so that's where it gets really big, using the theme now playing in the basses while the top line's playing all that bass line that it has at the beginning. Okay, so enough about the music. Uh, I will now want to open up the mix session and then take you through the live recordings uh, that we did that were so incredible in um, New Zealand, Wellington. Big shout out to the New Zealand Orchestra. Uh, they performed absolutely fantastic. And obviously, uh, Conrad Pope with the tips that I got from him, how to record it best, and his exceptional conducting, and the huge amount of fun that we had every night for two, three weeks talking about music and orchestration was just like mind boggling to me. A wonderful experience, and we've became really good friends in the process of it. And now, every now and then, um, besides work, we're just hanging out in the backyard and talk about music because I'm quoting Conrad, if music doesn't humble you, you're doing something wrong. And that's such a beautiful statement. I've used it multiple times after that because that's exactly how I feel. That music is so, it's such a mighty thing that it should humble you every day and be glad whether you're a hobbyist, whether you're a professional, whether you play piano twice a week for two hours or just 15 minutes, it doesn't matter. Music is such a beautiful thing. And the fact that we can just all now do it in more or less, more time or less time is something that's really great. And the development of computers have a lot to do with it, that we're now all having a music program on our laptop or on our iPhone and we can make music every day if we want to. Okay, we're gonna load up the different session right now. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, um, with the mix session. So again, let me repeat a couple of things that we've already talked about in uh, previous sessions, but it's so important, I wanna emphasize it again. So these sessions are not to really drastically change your sound overall. That's already being done on a suite level, on a queue level, and in the template, separate episode about that. Um, so this is like minor changes in volume, adding some plugins to give it like a little bit more brightness, a little bit more low end, or take some of the brightness out, some of the aggressive uh, mid range, um, do some subtle volume moves so it fits in a little nicer, um, add a little bit of compression to control the, the, the volume of certain instruments. So it's all like really relatively subtle. So I'm not gonna go too much into this. We just covered that in, in, in previous episodes. Um, but we have the live recordings here. So I do want to play a couple of these uh, recordings. So here we have the choir. Mm -hmm. 
really nice choir sound. Uh, here we have the live brass. Boy, does that sound aggressive when they blow really hard. Um, that was really great, that take that we did. Uh, let's go to uh, the strings. Let's play those. So you see here I'm doing these little changes on the VCA, what we talked about in the previous episode. If I bring up my VCA window here, we just see the C v VCAs. Oh, we see a few other elements as well. I'm just going to take them out. Here we go. Beautiful sounds. Um, so, you know, with the VCAs, you make it a little bit more human, what I talked about in the previous episodes too. Uh, you got to help the performance a little bit. Um, then also here, we see the sound design that we uh, talked about earlier, um, where these things uh, now bounce in different uh, stems. They just become like a few compact uh, stems. So also this suite um, and theme, um, is not really that intense on the amount of tracks. And it doesn't have to be. Sometimes people think, oh, you know, when it's um, uh, a, score, a score that Tom works on is, uh, is not good unless it has um, uh, 10,000 tracks and sound design and stuff like that in it. Where does it come from? Oh, it's this thing here. We had a little beep tone there. We needed to take it out. It was one of the um, uh, batteries that was overcooking. I probably hooked up too many cents uh, on that battery. How would that be? Anyway, different subject. Um, anyway, uh, so we're back to the uh, tracks with the sound design. So they're now in there. There are not that many tracks. I just said, you know, some people think that, um, oh, if Tom works on the score, it's only good if there's 10,000 tracks in there. That's not the case. <laughs> you know, sometimes I like to look for a simple uh, solutions as well. Um, so this is a relatively simple solution, but it sounds really big and it sounds really uh, intense. Um, so um, even though this was, again, an original suite, the way that I'm going to play it to you right now, um, it's actually happen it's happening almost like 90% of it completely into uh, in the film. And the section where this happens is when we meet him for the very first time. That's all I'm going to say, because otherwise I'm going to get that slap on the wrist again that I'm doing too many spoilers. Uh, spoiler alerts. Well, spoilers, spoilers, I would say. I do too many spoilers, spoilers. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to play you this thing right now, how it eventually turned out, um, which is like a, um, um, a four-minute thing or something like that. Uh, and I will switch a little bit between... Uh, the different windows. It's not all that interesting to see what's happening here. Um, just listen to it and I will show you a little bit what I did with the um, VCAs and stuff like that and scroll through the mixer. <clears throat>
really great, the sound of the woodwinds, so that's why I'm soloing it for a second. Mm -hmm. And that was that. Thank you for watching, and I hope you liked this episode. We covered the Shrike theme uh, with, again, a couple of aspects about mixing, um, what we did with the harmony, the pedal tone G. So I really look you out. I really hope you liked this episode. Sorry. I really liked, I really hope you liked this episode. Okay, that's it. See you soon.